All right, everybody, it's been about two weeks since Halo Infinite's winter update released, and I've got a lot of things to say about it, and it's pretty positive so far. So if I were to grade the scale between the launch of Halo Infinite, which was very exciting, and then the release of something like Season 2, which was not really that exciting. I would say this is much closer to the launch of Halo Infinite. It's a net positive for the game. Obviously, there are some criticisms, but this is 343's first update they've released where the pros outweigh the cons. They've also done a lot of uh, PC performance passes, which is really appreciated, so I've gotten the chance to play it more on PC. Which, speaking of PC, uh, before we get into the topic of the video, uh, it's time for me to pay the bills. I'm extremely fortunate to have partnered with Apex Gaming PCs to create a custom line of late-night gaming-themed PCs. The PCs have been pre-built, which means it's easier for you to just get going in game once yours arrives. They come in three tiers, Marina, ODST, and Spark. Each tier of PC is designed to run modern games, and they're all built for different budgets that people have. With Black Friday coming up, it's also worth mentioning that all PCs are 15% off till the 30th of November if you use the coupon code LATE NIGHT with your order to support the channel. And I want to extend a huge thank you to Apex Gaming PCs for helping with this. Not everyone has the knowledge or time to build a PC for themselves, so the convenience of just having one ready to go with one order is really nice. When you get your late night gaming PC, let me know what game you're going to play first on it. And with that being said, let's get to the topic. So okay, let's talk about the positives right now of the update. Uh, Forge mode is very good. I'm a pretty big Forge enthusiast. I actually really loved Halo 5's Forge mode. Um, I've been forging since the Halo 3 days. I remember I didn't have Xbox Live. I couldn't download map packs, so I had to borrow my friend's Halo 3 Mythic disc, and I would forge on uh, Sandbox on that. And then since then, it was Reach. I played quite a bit of Halo 4's Forge, loved Halo 2 Anniversary's Forge, believe it or not. Halo 5's Forge was absolutely my jam, and so far I am really enjoying Halo Infinite's Forge. It doesn't stop me from having some criticisms about it, but the criticisms are more from, like, enthusiasm because they've gotten so much right that I'm like, oh my god, I have so many ideas on how you could make this better because this is already really good what you've got. Just a quick look on the uh, custom games content browser, file share, forge, whatever you want to call it. People are already making really beautiful stuff, and I think that's actually a really big strength of this forge. Halo 5's forge was the first time that 343 really took proper steps in giving people more control over the lighting and the art direction of their maps, kind of trying to get away from that, like, Halo reach, you've just got a bunch of objects kind of look. You know what I'm talking about. But a, big prob but a big problem with Halo 5 was that it didn't push it quite far enough. The lighting tools that it gave us were good, but they were not great. And with Halo Infinite, the lighting tools that they're giving us are... They're exactly what I would have needed back in Halo 5's days. I already have so much control over the lighting and the art of my map, the shadow placement and everything. It's just... They did such a good job with the graphical fidelity control that you have in Forge mode this time around. And because of that, the community is making some really beautiful maps. Uh, in some cases, the maps look way better than even the maps that 343 launched the game with, at least graphics-wise, I think. What I do think is currently holding back the Forge mode, the object palette. So currently, they are doing pretty well with Forerunner stuff, but it's a lot of like accents and details. You know, you've got like UNSC crates, UNSC radios, uh, forerunner wall accents, and just like detail basically. When it comes to actually building things like structures, they kind of assume that you're just gonna like Lego things up and just stack a bunch of blocks together to make your structures and then swap the textures around. And I think just for quick construction, what 343 needs to do is get more buildings in there. The community has been talking about Halo Reach, how it had like two-story building, three-story building, uh, walkways, and then covers, like a dev-made walkways, not very generic walkways. And I do think that that's important. Now, some of the more experienced forgers could think, I could like stack all these different objects together and create that myself. 
here's what, why I think it's important to have more generic structures in there. Some of the people who aren't very good with Forge, it helps them get their maps made much quicker. And so I think 343 really does need to look into getting some of those UNSC buildings in there, those fobs from the campaign, the Forerunner beam towers, banished bases, banished structures and stuff, as well as just like a lot of banished things. There's like no banished objects in the Forge, which is very confusing considering the banished are the enemy of the campaign. There's also no pelican no phantoms or anything like that. You can definitely tell that Forge was uh, scaled down to an extent just to get it out the door, and even then it's still released in a beta form, so there's a lot of bugs on top of like missing features that I would have expected, but I hope you can hear it in my voice. These like nitpicks and criticisms, they come from excitement because I really like the Forge mode, and I'm kind of like, I've got my own personal wish list of things that I think could make it even better. So yeah, it goes without saying, Forge is fantastic so far. The content browser was also a surprise addition. I didn't expect it to come because usually, you know, with 343, they're very late on features. The content browser, they got in much sooner than I was expecting. Halo 5, its Forge mode didn't release with the content browser. That came many months later. So it's here now, it works, and uh, Forge is all the better for it. It is a bit buggy, I will say, and I suspect that's actually due to the UI, not not the actual feature itself, which I'll get into later. So far, things are looking good on the Forge front. It's a net positive for the game, and I can't wait to see 343 get some of those awesome Forge maps into matchmaking. Uh, on the topic of new maps, they're okay. So 343 released two Forge maps into matchmaking. One of them was buggy, so they pulled it for a little while, reworked it, and now it's back. Uh, I believe it was called Argyle. But the two new Forge maps that they added, I think they're... They're fine, but they're not outstanding. They've kind of unfortunately got that like sanitized problem where it's kind of like live fire. It feels kind of like a lot of the fun, a lot of the more interesting aspects of this map were sanded off for the sake of feedback, player research, player testing. Like we need to make this thing as sanitized as possible. Also, I think art direction could have been a tad better on them. The lighting on them looks beautiful, but especially on that one interior map, the UNSC interior themed map, it, the, they're not utilizing the lighting tools as much as they could and a lot of the art and decals and uh, texturing it looks very flat and forgy for lack of a better term and people have been criticizing these maps for being way too large and honestly i wonder if the maps aren't too large maybe it's just that artistically they're not that immersive you don't really believe that you're in this map like it's a real place like it's very transparently a forge map you know and so I think, like, put some wires on the ground, put some cables on the ground, put insects in the air, like, get a bit of an atmosphere going, because these Forge maps, they don't have an atmosphere. They still feel like Forge maps, and I've messed around in Forge. I know that more could be done to art them up. Part of me wonders that the reason they're not quite arted up as much as they could, they're not as atmospheric as they could be, is due to performance concerns. Because these maps also have to run at a stable frame rate on the original Xbox. And even back with Halo 5, part of the reason that a lot of those matchmaking maps in Halo 5 just didn't look that good, it's not because the Forge sucked. It was actually 343 consciously removing detail and toning down graphical fidelity for the sake of performance, because they have milestones that they have to hit on these maps in order to get them into matchmaking. And I really, really hope that they're not kind of scaling down the graphical fidelity of these Forge maps for the sake of matchmaking, because I definitely don't want a repeat of like Halo 5 or Halo Reach, where a majority of the maps in matchmaking just look very flat. So those are my thoughts on them. They're they're fine maps. They're, they could be a little bit more interesting in terms of gameplay, uh, but I also think that an issue with them, especially in regards to the gameplay, is actually the way that 343 places weapons, which I'll get into in the cons. So the campaign also received a lot of improvements. Some of these improvements were expected, but a lot of them were actually surprises to me. So the things that I did expect to be there was mission replay, uh, networking co-op. Those are fine. They function as expected. What does surprise me, though, is Mission Replay was expanded more than I thought. What I assumed they were going to do with Mission Replay is allow you to just roll back the state of the world. Like, you could roll back the open world to when you first uh, get out of the intro levels. And then you could roll back the open world to the dig site, and, like, all associated collectibles and whatever would be reset. But no, it's 
Honestly, you can replay almost every single activity in the open world, and it doesn't affect the rest of the open world, which is kind of surprising. I can't imagine the math that must have gone into getting the mission replay feature to work and be as expansive as it is, but the hard work is appreciated because this is more than I was expecting it to be, and it, it's very nice being able to jump around to different activities, replay them, not just for footage, but even for curiosity's sake, refreshing my memory, or in the case of some of, some of those banished outposts, really just enjoying the act of clearing through them. You know, Halo Infinite, it's its linear sequences are not that creative. The best thing you've got really is these open world giant outposts that you have to capture as far as combat encounters are concerned, and they are fun to replay. What I definitely will say though is the mission replay function, it kind of exposes some of the, the, the bad aspects of the open world, like those marine rescue missions are like really, really slapped together as well as the high value targets where they just place an enemy just out in the open with a health bar and you can assassinate the high value target and then run away but it doesn't matter the mission wasn't completed because you didn't kill all of his goons too so it's like it definitely unfortunately the fact it's so easy to replay chunks of the campaign it really does expose how artificial and kind of hacked together it is it's not a very organic open world <laughs> but it's Dude, th this is good stuff. I'm really pleased with how Mission Replay works. They also improved facial animations. For about a year now, 343 has locked the faces of all NPCs to 30 FPS, and it looks, at least for me, like I'm somebody who notices this stuff and gets bugged by it a lot, it was very distracting to the point that I couldn't focus on what was going on in campaigns because everybody's faces were moving at 30 FPS while my computer was running the game at like 100 FPS. It just, it looked like everybody had like, like gifs over their face or something like that. They just looked so weird and disconnected. And what's even weirder is their body would move at 60 FPS or higher, but they're just their faces were jittering and stuttering around. Now they look a lot better. I haven't done tests yet to see if they've just raised it to 60 FPS or if they've unlocked the facial animations, but this is good. It's pretty annoying that it took them a year to fix this. I feel like campaign presentation really matters. Halo Infinite it launched with uh, cutscene issues. Basically, playback in cutscenes was bugged, so the camera would stutter, objects would stutter, characters would stutter. It's very subtle, but if you're someone like me who notices this stuff, it was annoying, and they left it like that for six months before fixing it, and now finally the facial animations are fixed. So now, 11 months since the release of the game, now the campaign you can replay it and you're getting a mostly content complete as well as visually coherent experience. The cutscenes, they look good now. But here we go. The campaign quality of life improvements are good. Uh, the lack of split screen co-op is not good, but it is what it is. Let's talk about the cons now. So Forge, as incredible as it is, it's let down by the plethora of bugs, glitches, and just issues with Halo Infinite's UI. And these affect custom games too. Yeah, custom games, it is still not working like it should be. Halo Infinite launched a year ago in November, currently over a year since the launch of the game, and custom games are still glitched. They're still buggy. They'll crash. Uh, they will frequently not save things that you selected. Sometimes it'll even play the wrong map that I've selected. Option Options will reset, I'll be switched between teams even though I didn't actually select that, and overall the, the forging experience is great, but when you get into Halo Infinite's UI, it's not great. It's very buggy, and it's, it's very frustrating that 343 still has not addressed all the bugs and glitches in Halo Infinite's UI and stabilized custom games. I also think it's very frustrating that the game doesn't have an open lobby system. Halo 5 eventually got an open lobby system. People could just join by clicking on your uh, player profile. MCC still has not gotten open lobbies to from what I understand, uh, but classic Bungie Halo titles, they had open lobbies and just, it's it's very annoying having to go to the Xbox LFG tab and try to invite people that way. And on top of that, you have to deal with the custom games bugs. You're not even sure if it's gonna crash or if it's not gonna save your settings. For the health of custom games, the game needs an open lobby system. I also feel like as awesome as the campaign additions are, more could have been done. New skulls, a scoring system, which is 
is still missing from the campaign, you know, campaign scoring or timing. Like some of those could make the campaign even more fun to play. But unfortunately, it seems like just outside of the obligatory mission replay feature, fixing up the bugs, the presentation, the polish, campaign not a lot is being done on expanding it and making it even more fun to play with new additions. I also feel like the new Forge maps that they added to the game, they're starting to highlight a growing problem with how Halo Infinite's multiplayer flows, which is the the strictness of the weapon pad system. I think that a lot of those forge maps could feel more organic if, say, you run into a room and there's like a battle rifle or a ravager just laying on the floor for you to pick up. But because everything has to be tethered to a wall and spawned in these, like, sci-fi weapon spawners, it makes rooms feel emptier than normal. I feel like some of uh, Halo's most iconic weapon spawns are usually an item leaning against a tree or placed on a table or in the middle of a room on the floor because it encourages people to like run out into the middle of that room potentially expose themselves the maps are starting to feel incredibly samey because they all have the same weapon placements they're all on the wall in these samey looking weapon pads just i I hope in the future 343 is open to the discussion about maybe untethering themselves from this this strictness that we have to use pads, we have to use them for spawning weapons. I think that there were also a lot of missed opportunities for improving the uh, gameplay experience, like quick swapping equipment in campaign. I'm, I'm not sure about you guys who are on controller, but it feels kind of like Mortal Kombat or like a fighting game where I'm like, oh, I need to please swap over to my drop shield, uh, right, left on the D-pad, or like, oh no, now I need to to equip the grappling hook right right come on like a wheel system or even just tapping the button and being able to swap to the next equipment the next equipment the next equipment the way that they have equipment swapping set up in the campaign is very clunky and unintuitive and it would be a lot easier with a quick swap function but they haven't really talked about that or even acknowledged if they would do something like that so i doubt it'll happen but i would like to see improvements made like that there's also no improvements made to the in-game hud such as being able to see like multiple grenades at any given time, kind of like the classic Halo titles. Maybe scaling the reticle size if you're playing on a wide FOV and you want your reticle to be a bit bigger. Maybe even like a bigger weapon cradle, because it's still very small looking in the corner of the screen and they promised that actually prior to the release of the game, that very shortly after launch, we're going to be adding a bigger weapon cradle and I guess something must have happened behind the scenes, because a lot of the improvements to the HUD, uh, they, they are not in the game yet and there's no ETA on them. <laughs> As great as Forge is in the game, as well as uh, the mission replay feature, it feels like 343 is struggling with multitasking where other studios do not struggle. It seems with 343 that they really seem to only be focused on one thing at any given time as, ex as opposed to improving the whole game. And also, the Winter Battle Pass, it's just kind of whatever, you know? Like, I feel like, I don't know, man, it's cosmetics are fine and all. Like, you can have as many cosmetics as you want. I'm not hyped about grinding it, you know, because it's like, there's still no progression system. There's still no career mode. Uh, the main menu still doesn't feel that great to navigate. There's still a bunch of missing features. I feel like a lot of effort went into the battle pass and it just still is not that exciting because the game, there's bigger fish to fry, I guess is what I'm trying to say. So I did I guess I'd appreciate if the next time they focus a little bit less on the battle pass stuff and focus more on some of the critical areas of the game, like the progression system and rewards, because 343, they've shown that they are struggling with multitasking. So I'd rather them prioritize what's important and battle passes are not important right now. The rest of the game is, at least to me. So those are my thoughts on the winter update. It's more pros than cons, which is very good to hear. Um, I said before that this new update saved Halo Infinite and people were like, but the game's still missing so many features. Oh my God, you're just being a shill. You Halo YouTubers are crazy. And let number one, you are absolutely correct. But uh, more seriously, let me clarify what I mean by that. So Halo Infinite, since the launch of the game, it's been bleeding out. You know, it's in critical condition. And what this update did was it stopped the bleeding. The game is still in critical condition and surgery still needs to be done, you know, and then after the surgery, there needs to be recovery and stuff. But what this update did was it stopped the bleeding. It saved. It has a chance, but we need to be careful now and the doctors have to operate quickly now that the game has kind of been stabilized. And if they don't operate quickly, then there's a chance that we could lose the game. A season two did not stabilize the game. It was not 
nearly enough work for the time that 343 had people waiting. But now, this, this is a good update. And season three, whenever that launches, is it like March? Jesus. It needs to be bountiful, plentiful. There needs to be a lot of good stuff in there because the game is stable, operation is required, and 343 needs to deliver next time. Like, no more season twos, basically. Every update now has to hit. But those are my thoughts. What are your thoughts on the winter update after sitting on the game for two weeks? I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comment section below. I'm just going to stop saying thoughts because it's starting to just sound more like a sound coming out of my mouth than a word. But with that being said, I'm going to let you guys get to it. And I need to edit this video that I am recording right now. Okay, bye. <laughs>